Hi, I'm Zorn of Sonic Farm Audio. In this little video tutorial, I'm going to talk about the most important aspects of mixing. Those things an artist should pay attention to when they're taking their tracks to a mixing engineer or when they're mixing on their own. So I'm going to play a number a client gave me. He said, this is a demo. I don't want to spend more than three hours on it. So it's a perfect example, you know, for a little crash course in mixing. Uh, he said, I'm going to have you master it later, so do your best within three hours. Um, while I'm playing this original version that he mixed on his own, uh, you're going to see on the screen the most important things you should pay attention to. So without further ado, here's a number. Okay, so you can immediately notice the boxy, flat, unexciting quality of this mix. To lose that, a lot of dynamics was changed. Drums were treated with a transient designer, actually a logic version of that called enveloper, whereby attack was increased on both kick and snare and the tail end was extended. A lot of EQing was done on guitars where the a low mid-range was cooped up to lose the muddiness that pressed hard on the mix. Uh, some distortion was added. And then on the vocals, a lot of dynamics, a lot of compression. And EQing was done to get the vocals to sit nicely and present in the mix without being masked by the rest of the instrument, especially cymbals and guitars. Uh, finally, some... Uh, Ambiance was added in the form of reverb and echo, and that added more depth to the mix. So, after three hours of work, the mix sounded something like this. Alright, so there you have it. If your style of music is different from what you're hearing, and I'm sure it is, at least to some degree, um, you would fine-tune your mixing approach to suit that style. Maybe, you know, 
apply a little less processing or whatever it takes. Um, I hope you are familiar with basic processors like EQ and, and compressors. Uh, EQ is pretty straightforward. You just make changes and, and listen and whatever sounds better, apply that. With compressor, you need a little more skill. Uh, you need to know how to use a ratio, attack, threshold, release, knee, and all of those things. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there for, for you to learn how to use dynamic processors. I'll show you on the vocal how much processing, how much compression, how much gain reduction it is doing, it is applying. So I'm soloing the vocal track and I have up here both the uh, the multiband and the single band compressor. So take a listen. Well, I jump out of the box car. I lay a dollar on the track. I paid my dues to the railway. But I know I'll be coming on back. See the gain reduction movie? LLB is the place you'll see. That's where I'm gonna meet my family. On the left side, you could see that each band, each frequency band, has different compressor action. So that's because the vocal goes up and down. It has different spectrums of frequencies. If it goes down, it can become boomy, and uh, you can adjust that compressor multiband to, to to take care of that. Or if it goes high and becomes thin, again, it can uh, take off some of that uh, offending frequency. Uh, okay, and then you could also hear some ambience on this recording, on this uh, soloed vocal. To me, this is just the right amount for this song. If if it's in the mix, you wouldn't even notice it. But if you were to mute it, then you would feel something missing. That's just the right uh, amount of uh, reverb. So that it adds some shimmer and richness, and you can't really notice it separately. Okay. Um, the, the other thing I was going to show you is the uh, the action of uh, enveloper of the transient designer on snare drum and kick let's first take the kick and solo it now take a listen I'm gonna vary the controls See how the dynamics is lost here, the, the attack is lost. And that's too much, so some, somewhere in the middle. More attack, and the release is the same thing. You can go from totally short to extended. So somewhere in the middle again with snare drum exactly the same thing. See here how it loses the edge? And that's too much. See here. So it's more apparent in the mix. When you put in the mix, that's where you really start appreciating that extended release. Okay, so let's move on. I'd like you to pay attention to the solo I'm going to play. First the original file, and then I'm going to play the new mix while adding some uh, uh, echo to it. Actually, it's going to be some mono echo uh, with the return that's bouncing between left and right. So it, it's going to create this lush shimmering effect. So let's first hear the, the original version. <laughs>
kind of dead, isn't it? So now, let's hear that same thing. Okay, last thing I'd like to uh, point out, when you export the final mix file ready for mastering, you want to export it in the highest possible resolution. If you work in 24 bits, so leave it in 24 bits and export it in 24 bits, the highest sample rate, whatever you were working, and don't uh, bring it down to 4416. That's the job of the mastering engineer. Also, you should not have any plugins in the mix bus, on the global bus or stereo bus, whatever you call it. Here I do have two plugs, and I should say it's there because I didn't finish it. Um, one of them is a match EQ. Match EQ is a great equalizer. Like it says, it's, it's something that matches uh, a file to another template file. In this case, I took a Radio Ready song in a similar genre to what I was mixing and I, when I tweaked my mix to a reasonable quality point, I then compared the spectrum of, of my mix to that of the mainstream radio song in a similar genre. So what it did, it created this EQ that matched uh, my spectrum to the radio song. This can be very, very useful because it will show you where your song is going to go tone-wise when it's mastered. Also, it can do a lot of damage if you just leave it there and if you, your mix is not balanced. It's going to get a wrong information. It's actually going to create that same spectrum no matter from what signal, regardless of which instrument. Say if the template file has a lot of mid-range, it's going to just take your mid-range and boost it up. So it's not going to ask if this mid-range comes from vocal, from guitar, from synthesizer, whatever. So be careful when you do this. A little practice goes a long way. You will learn. Um, always put your mix in the best balance and use a similar genre of music. And then, you know try with different template songs and, and see which one takes you to like a really good sounding master then don't leave that in there like i did but rather go and and uh, tweak individual tracks tweak eq individual tracks so that they go towards that tonality did you get that so uh that could be a very useful tool so you can get an idea when the mastering engineer takes you to the kind of radio uh frequency uh, spectrum you get you're going to get an idea how it's going to sound okay great so that's basically it for now i wish you a great mixing session and a lot of success with your music okay see you later bye <laughs>